Cheerio, chaps. Fancy a spot of geometry? We are going to continue our lessons by looking at some more special parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. A rhombus has all the properties of a parallelogram, plus a few more. So, if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then it has four congruent sides. So go ahead and draw yourself a rhombus and then mark all the sides of congruent. Again, I will be adding in the blue uh, pre-AP implied statements, so level does not have to write them down. Next, if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then the diagonals are perpendicular. So draw in your diagonals, and the place where they intersect is going to be a 90 degree angle. And then, if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So, if you draw in your diagonals, that means that each of our corner angles will be cut into two equal pieces by the diagonal. Alright, now let's give this example a try. Please pause the video and try it on your own, and then watch me do it. The following polygon is a rhombus. Find the measure of the numbered angles. So, looking at our polygon, let's think back to the rules that we just learned. Well, first, four congruent sides. That doesn't help us because we're only talking about angles. Next, the diagonals are perpendicular. So, in the middle, we see angles 3 and angle 4. Well, they meet at the center of the... They, I mean, they are the angles where the diagonals intersect. Therefore, we know there is a right angle right there. So, I'm going to mark that. And then we also just learned that the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So, that means that our corner angles are going to be cut in half. So, since 2 and 35 degrees are cut in half by the diagonal, that means they're going to be equal, so I'm going to mark them as such. The same as angle 1 and the angle adjacent to it. Now, from what we already learned, let's do the easy one first. Well, if angle 4 is a right angle, then angle 3 is also a right angle, and so we know they are both going to be 90 degrees. Next, let's look at angle 2. Like we just said, the diagonals bisect the corner angles, so angle 2 and angle 35 have to be equal, so the measure of angle 2 is 35 degrees. Now, we need to look at the measure of angle 1. How might we find that? Well, if you look, we have a triangle right here, and we know there are 180 degrees in each triangle. Since angle 3 is a right angle, we know that to find angle 1, we must only say 90 minus angle 2, which is 90 minus 35. So, the measure of angle 1 is 55 degrees. Now, let's look at angle 5 and angle 6. Since a rhombus is also a parallelogram, we know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent to each other. So, since angle 5 is opposite angle 2 and 35, they are congruent to each other. So, angle 2 is 35. So, 35 plus 35 equals 70. So, the measure of angle 5 is 70. We can follow the same uh, principle from angle 6. We know that angle 1 is 55, and then the angle adjacent to it is also 55. So, the measure of angle 6 is just 55 plus 55, which is 110. Now let's just look at a rectangle. A rectangle has all the properties of a parallelogram, plus a few more. So, if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then it is equiangular. So that means all four angles inside the rectangle are congruent to one another. Next, if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent to one another. So I'm going to draw in my diagonals in green, because it would be kind of hard for me to mark them congruent. Um, so I'm just going to make them the same color in my picture. And last, if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then it has four right angles. So I'm going to put my little squares in the corner. So you might think that this is pretty obvious, which it is. In our first rule, we talked about how a rectangle is equiangular. And then on the first section of notes, we talked about how all quadrilaterals have 360 degrees on the inside. So if all four angles must be the same, then it must be 360 divided by... 4, and that is 90 degrees. So, rectangles always have 4 right angles. Now, let's try an example of rectangle problem. Please pause the video and give this one a shot on your own first. 
So QRST is a rectangle. If QS is equal to x plus 16, RT is equal to 3x minus 4, and the measure of angle R is 2y plus 34, find x and y. So the first thing that pops out to me is the measure of angle R. Well, angle R is a corner angle, and so we know, like we just said, that all angles are right angles. So I know that's going to be a right angle. I also know that since the rectangle is also a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent to each other. So that means that QS and RT are congruent to each other. And so they are equal. So QS equals RT, which means x plus 16 is equal to 3x minus 4. Now I can easily solve this equation. So first I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So that gives me x plus 20 is equal to 3x. Then I want to move my x to the other side, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So that means 20 is equal to 2x. I finish off by dividing by 2, so x is equal to 10. Now let's tackle that right angle. So if measure of angle R is 90 degrees, then we know that 2y, is equal, 2y plus 34 is equal to 90 degrees. I'm going to subtract 34 from both sides, which will give me 2y is equal to 56. I finish off by dividing by 2, so y is going to be equal to 28. Now let's talk about squares. If a quadrilateral is a square, then it is a rhombus and a rectangle. So that means that it has all of the properties of a rhombus and a rectangle. So it has four congruent sides, four right angles, perpendicular diagonals, congruent diagonals, and diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So let's try a square problem. Please pause the video and try it on your own first. So ABCDE is a square. If the measure of angle AC, DAC excuse me, is equal to 9x, find x. So again, the thing that should pop out in my mind is, oh, I know that my corner angles are right angles. So I know that angle A is 90 degrees. Then I look and see that it is, since the square is also a rhombus, that the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So I know that the two angles that A has been divided into are equal to each other. So if the two angles are equal, that is just 90 divided by 2. So that means that DAC is equal to, nine, is equal to 45 degrees. So I know that 9x is equal to 45. If I divide both sides by 9, then I see that x is equal to 5. So we are learning a lot about special uh, quadrilaterals in this unit, and they all, some of them share properties, some of them don't, and so we're going to create this flow chart. We will fill in this whole chart between this video and the next video, but today we're just going to work on this section over here, but please do leave space for the rest of it, because I will ask you to return to it in the next video. So the first thing we talked about, or the first type of special parallel, oh, I just gave it away. The first type of quadrilateral that we talked about was a parallelogram. So from the parallelograms, there are two special kinds of those that share the parallelogram rules. And that was a rectangle and a rhombus. So a rectangle and a rhombus come down from a parallelogram, so they have all of the same properties as the parallelogram did. And then the rectangle and the rhombus give their properties to the square. So on your homeworks and quizzes and tests, you'll be answering true false questions. And this flowchart can help you answer those questions. So I'd like for you to draw an arrow starting at the bottom of the flowchart and going up and then label it as true. And then I would like for you to do the opposite, draw an arrow starting at the top and going down and label it as false. So this is your key to how to solve the true-false questions. In each question they will give you a property and they will give you an, a shape that they ask about the property. So if the shape, you circle the shape and draw an arrow to the shape that the property applies to and it goes up, then the answer will be true. If you circle the shape and then the property belongs to a shape below it, then the answer will be false. Now let's practice this. So these are the three true-false questions we're going to answer. I've redrawn my flowchart over to the right. You don't need to do this. I just did it so it would be on the same page so I could draw on it and have my true-false questions up on the screen at the same time. So the first one, it says the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. So diagonals bisecting means parallelogram. So we're going to start with the rhombus, 
So I'm going to circle rhombus on my chart. And then we go to a parallelogram. So I'm going to travel up the arrow to a parallelogram. So since I traveled up my chart, then the answer will be true. Let's try the next one. The consecutive angles of a rhombus are congruent. So consecutive angles congruent is true about rectangles. So we are again starting with a rhombus. So I'm going to circle rhombus. And I travel up the arrows to the parallelogram and then back down to the rectangle. So since I had to go down at all, that means that this answer is false. And lastly, the consecutive sides of a rhombus are congruent. Well, we know consecutive sides congruent is true about a rhombus. So a rhombus is a rhombus. Well, of course that's true. And this concludes our notes for tonight. Ta-ta for now!